Hi, this is Wild Money, and today I'll be going through Immediate Media Co's 39th issue of Lego Ninjago, Masters of Spinjitzu. This issue is £4.99 and comes with a limited edition coal minifigure and a bonus mystery minifigure, in this case an Android. On page 2 we get Hunted, telling us about the new season and the two realms in which we see our heroes. The first realm, where a grown woman must work with the ninja to get the dragon armour and get back to Ninjago City where Lloyd and Nia have set up the resistance to fight against Lord Garmadon. On page 3 we get the new contents page that goes with the new season, in which we now have the Dragon Hunters as the villains, Eye of the Dragon which is the new hidden symbol to find throughout the magazine, as well as the usual contents page telling us what we will get throughout the magazine. We then get the Ninja Scroll, which is the new Ninja Times. The messages we get are The Realm of the Oni and Dragons, a short piece telling us that the realm consists of weeds, rocks, dragons and oni. The Dragon Hunters, a piece telling us that whilst the dragons freely roam the land, Iron Baron and his dragon hunters seek to capture and conquer as many dragons as they can. The Ninja Heroes, a piece telling us about the ninja trapped in the first realm, and gives us a clue as to what they will need to get back. A warning is also given to us about dragons being wild and untamed which makes them dangerous, meaning that the ninja will have to regain their trust in order to fight with On page 5 we get our first game, Get the Ninja Ready for Action, in which Heavy Metal, one of the new villains, has spoiled a picture of the ninja and you have to spot the differences between the original and the spoiled. This issue's comic starts with Lloyd and Nia fleeing from the Sons of Garmadon. On page 7 we see Lloyd and Nia fight off the three Sons of Garmadons that kept up with them, and after defeating the Sons of Garmadon, they enter their secret headquarters. On page 8, we see Mistake talking about the current predicament the ninjas are in. She also says that she knows the realm of the Oni and Dragon, which is quite interesting considering that we haven't learnt much about her in the past seasons, so she may be a major player in this season. We then get our next game, Lost Among Dragons, which is a game where you can draw your own dragon designs and you can even send them to the magazine. I will include the email that you send them to in the description for the video. On pages 10 and 11, we see the ninja explore their surroundings and even finding dragon eggs and a dragon also. At the end of the page, we get the idea that a vehicle is approaching. On the next page, we see dragon hunters arriving at the nest and plotting to take the eggs, which is when the ninja decide they must stop them and help protect the dragon and its eggs. We then get Kai approaching, which is a game in which you must guide Kai to Cole's hammer to help find him. We also get a difficult path, which is a game in which you have to order the direction Zane needs to take in order to also get to Cole's hammer. Next are pages 14 and 15, which give us an overview of Cole, the minifigure that comes with this issue, as well as an overview for the extra toy and the game, Smashed. We are told that Cole is the master of Earth, and in this foreign realm he has many new challenges, such as training the young Master Wu. The extra toy I got with this magazine is a Nindroid minifigure, and the information we get with it is that Nindroids are a modified version of Zane, and that Krypto was the first Nindroid of his kind. We then get our game, Smashed, where all you have to do is identify what ninja were in the now smashed picture. In this magazine we get a Cole minifigure from the Sons of Garmadon season. This Cole comes with his Sons of Garmadon ninja outfit, with the only difference being a new ninja mask that doesn't have the symbol at the top. He comes with two faces, one that is angry and one that is supposed to be a funny face. And apart from that he also comes with his printed torso, printed legs, um, but he does not come with his hair. I really like the print on the torso on the back because I think they, that they look quite cool and almost real which makes the entire costume look a lot better. I also really like the print on the legs because I think they fit really well with the rest of the ninja suit. And also because they have a really nice design on their own. Quite like the like almost scale kind of looking um, costume with the chest up there and the legs down here. And also like two little uh, strings or fabric going across from the bottom of the legs. Um, the design also works really well with the rest of the Sons of Garmadon figures that we've been getting with the previous issues. Like with the villains. Because this is just between Sons of Garmadon and Hunted. So it doesn't have the rips in or any of the damage to the suit when they were transferred between the realms. Now to move on to the hammer, which I really like because it's a more unique hammer um, that has a better colour scheme and design than Cole's other hammers because they're more basic and more like warrior kind of style hammers. I, I really like the contrast between the brown and gold because I think they make each other stand out, especially with the um, gold studs at the top of the hammer on either side. 
and Major League Brown Hammer, just because the gold really stands out against the brown and almost makes the brown look a bit more uh, vibrant as well. The other thing I really like about this hammer is the design because it's double sided in the fact that it's got two rims from the diesel knot on either side so it allows it to be allows it to be used in multiple ways. But I also like it because it can be stood on its own, which I don't know why I like it, but I just think it's quite cool because you can have coal standing with the hammer just standing on its own like that and it can even be used to make coal stand a bit more sturdier. But that's why I really like especially when you consider to his other hammers that just look a bit more basic. Um, or they'll just have brown and grey colour schemes where this one has tried to keep the brown and grey middle part there for his normal hammers but has gone with the more unique colour aspects of the brown and gold. The mystery minifigure that I got with this magazine was a Nindroid minifigure that comes with the Nindroid mask, a printed torso and back, um, one face just because it's a regular Nindroid so it just has the back printed head and it comes with a special Nindroid weapon that somewhat resembles a scythe. I do really like this Nindroid minifigure because of the torso design and the back design. This is because I like the machine-like design to the minifigure that goes well with the clothes that the Nindroid wears. I also like that the machinery on the torso matches the colour of his metallic arm, which is a very nice colour to contrast against the black on the minifigure because the minifigure is majorly black. I also really like the Nindroid mask, again because of the mix between clothing and machinery. That brings a really high-tech look to the minifigure and almost like, um, again, a ninja robot kind of design, which is what its purpose was supposed to be. But I do like how we can see like the pipes going from there, the almost classic red button on a robot, and the cogs and gears and blades on the back of it to show that it is actually a machine. And then the clothing to show that it's trying to be a ninja, so it's meant to be stealthy. But I do quite like the design, especially because they kept with it for the newer seasons when they made those special white ones. To protect the um, realm crystal but I do quite like that they've kept using the same design because I do really like these masks and I do really like this print. One thing that I also really like with this minifigure is the weapon that comes with it just because I think it's a really cool weapon with the colours that contrast being the red and the two greys. This one almost being a space grey and this being a metallic grey but I do quite like how the scythe aspect of it the almost blade can move around so you can switch to position of it and if you didn't want to use that part you could um, put something else onto it or you could just use the pieces all together for something different because you know, this used to be just a regular lightsaber piece so you could just have a lightsaber or you could have like um, a lightsaber that's got a blade at the front or any other kind of sword or weapon so I think that's quite good because it it's not restricted to what they say you have to use. Same thing with the hammer, you could probably actually mix these two together to make a good combination of weapons or you could at least make something new. So I do quite like this and I also like the idea that if you wanted to switch the combinations you can do certain things that switch the design and how the character would hold it. So you could have something like almost a gun that the android could use or something like a banner, a siren a sword, a, an elongated scythe, so you can change it to whatever you really want and I quite like that about the minifigure because that means it's not restricted and it's almost worth more than it's sold for but yeah, that's one reason that I'll definitely get one this um, magazine The other mystery minifigure that I've seen in some stores is a Zane minifigure and out of the two I would probably go for the Zane just because whilst Nindroids are good, that Zane minifigure was quite cool I believe it's the one that has the little staff with the shurikens on the end but that's quite a nice looking Zayn minifigure as well and I think it also comes with his new hair, the um, titanium one so I would look out for that one if you were looking to get a good mystery minifigure but if not, this mystery minifigure is perfectly fine and goes quite well with the core minifigure because of the hammer and the weapons are almost a similar size which makes them good to use against each other On page 16 we get Race to the Dragon which is a game where you have to do two things the first is to find the correct path for the ninja and the villains, and the other task is to find out who faces the least traps and therefore will get there first. As always, we get two posters. The first is Heroes in Two Realms and shows the ninjas in both of this season's realms, and the other is a poster of the Diesel Knot chasing the Firstborn Dragon. Both are really cool, but I would have to go with the Firstborn poster. This issue's competition awards the winner with a Master Builder Experience and Character Meet and Greet. It also comes with a free Kids Go Free voucher to Legoland Discovery Centre, so I would not miss the chance to get this issue. In this issue, we get an overview of two sets from the newest season. 
The first is Kai's Destiny Wing, which comes with Kai, Jet Jack, the Destiny Wing, and the Dragon Blade, which is one of the four components that make up the Dragon Armor, the key weapon in the new season. Whilst I don't have this set, it does look really good, especially with the Destiny Wing that comes with four shooters. The other set we get an overview of is the Throne Room Showdown, which comes with Lloyd, Nia, Samurai X, Skylar, and Harumi. It also comes with her throne and a cell that holds Lloyd. While this set may not be as cool as the Destiny's Wing, it does come with some good minifigures and has cool interactive features. On pages 24 and 25, we get the second part of the comic, in which we see the ninja steal the rims from the diesel knot to make Cole a new hammer. Cole gives the suggestion to take the bolts and rivets from the vehicle and use them as ammunition. We then see the ninja attack the hunters, who decide to leave the eggs behind and get to the vehicle. On the next two pages, we see the ninja take the eggs back to the nest and the hunters retreat to their vehicles, as they expect the dragon to get the ninja. When the ninja begin to leave, Daddy No Legs plans to capture the ninja and take them to Dead Zen. On the final pages of the comic, we see the hunters attack the ninja, and as they are about to win the fight and capture the ninja, the dragon zaps the hunters, causing them to flee. At the end of the comic, we see the ninja comfort the dragon and reassure that it will be safe. On pages 30 and 31, we get some info on the new villains of the season, the Dragon Hunters. We are told that their one goal is to catch dragons, and that their leader, Iron Baron, rules the hunters through fear and lies. We are also told that he carries scars from the battle with Firstborn, the mother of all dragons, and that during this battle, he captured the Dragon Bone Blade, which is a blade that is supposed to be carved from one of her bones. We are told that the hunters are ruffians who have adapted to the wasteland by making equipment out of scrap metal and replacing lost limbs with machinery. We also get told about their wicked vehicle, the Diesel Knot, which is a heavily armoured rolling fortress that is perfectly equipped for a range of dragons. On page 32 we have one of my favourite parts of the magazine, Ninja Post, where you can send your best Ninjago drawings and pictures for a chance to win a prize. The prize for this issue is a Lego Ninjago movie keyline. On page 34 of the magazine, we get to see what's in the next issue, which will be on sale from the 8th of August, so don't miss your chance of getting this magazine. Next issue, we will get a Jet Jack minifigure, as well as a mystery toy, so I'd make sure to pick up the next issue. As always, the last page also features the answers to the puzzles in the magazine. In this magazine, we get a J Spinjitsu stand, and on the other side, we also get a Lloyd Spinjitsu stand. If I were to pick from the two, I would go for the Lloyd's Minjitsu stand just because I prefer Lloyd as a character and I think it looks a lot better. But the good thing about these stands is that you can switch between the two just by flipping the side. That's the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, don't hesitate to like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. Leave any questions in the comment section and I'll try my best to answer them. You can also follow me on Twitter for updates too. Thanks for watching, I've been Marvel Manny.